Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hope you enjoyed the last two class and went through books or internet for studying. So, before studying the my third lecture for this uh, basic concepts in immunology in module 1, I will just to request one to all of you those who are new to immunology or studying for the first time, please follow the class with books and because everything is not possible to say in the um, class in the, during this stipulated period of time, read any available books with you, because this uh, subject is very interesting, but there is a always a possibility because similar names and similar cells are doing various kind of things. So, when we explain many times it happens, I am telling from my experience of taking the class to our student, like initially if you do not study or follow day by day, what will happen? If you want to study just before the exam or want to cover up everything together, you will remember everything, but when you will try to answer or defend the question, everything will be mixed up. Okay. So, this is my suggestion, I will not repeat it. So, please follow, I mean you do not have to read much for each lecture, but read just after the lecture you read the book, any book, but that chapter you hope you understand the cartoons or the figures may not match, but you will see everything or you will find everything in almost any book, but I am following the Genoese um, immunobiology. So, you will if you have this book it is only better because the slide will also see the same slide. Okay. So, next class today. So, the point of adaptive immunity was the interaction of antigen with antigen receptor induces lymphocytes to acquire effector and memory activity. How this lymphocyte looks like? This is this is the lymphocytes in blood, how it looks like, and this is the electron micrograph, how this lymphocytes. So, seeing them, it is not much to understand like how exactly, but this is just to show you how the lymphocyte looks like under microscope, regular microscope and electron microscope. So, what they have? So, both lymphocytes B and T lymphocytes they have a receptor that you already know. So, this is the B cell receptor, this is this is the B cell receptor how it looks like. Okay. So, that why this is not a receptor. So, it will be a receptor if it is integrated with the membrane. So, this is the B cell receptor when it is integrated into the membrane. So, what is happening if you see this, if you see this receptor you see there is Y like structure. I will discuss much more detail of this and this is a structure of antibody also in detail in uh, future classes when we will uh, read or when we will discuss the antibody in uh, specifically. So, for today if you see, so the, this region, this region is known as variable region and this part actually, actually this part is constant region or it is responsible for effector functions and variable region. So, this region variable region particularly this side. So, if you see this, this region is responsible for antigen binding. So, when it is attached with the membrane of the B cell, if this is B cell then it is B cell receptor. Okay. So, after interaction with the antigen, after interaction with the antigen it gives signals and the same cell converted to plasma cells and produce the same molecule, but without this part. Okay. So, what is going to happen is 
what is going to happen is they would not have this thing. Okay. So, this molecule is now free or secretory molecules. The same receptor molecules which will produce without the transmembrane domain which anchored them with the cell will release in blood and then this will serve as antibody or this is actually known as antibody. So, this antibody has two very specific distinct domain one we call the variable region which is responsible for antigen binding and this this part only the antigen binding part. And this part is constant it is not very much variable and this is responsible for effector function like what next antigen attached antibody attached the antigen and what to do next. So, this is the effector function same way if you see the T cell receptor this is the T cell receptor T cell receptor also very similar, but not exactly same because it is much smaller it also has this constant domain this blue region is the constant domain and the upper part is a variable region which is antigen binding sites here only two chain one is alpha another is beta. So, alpha beta two different chains combined and they are attached through this transmembrane domain they always remain attached they never secreted like the B cell receptor as antibody. So, they always remain attached and these two alpha and beta also linked by a disulfide bond this black lines what you see here also there are two different protein first is there is a big chain and a small chain. Okay. This is one peptide this is another peptide. So, there are two big peptides and two small peptides. So, one big and one small peptides are attached by a disulfide bond this black one and this unit like one big one small is also attached with a disulfide bond. Okay. So, they are this thin line is the hinge region and hinge region helps basically they can bend together like that. So, this is the antibody they can go up to this 180 degree to 0 degree almost. Okay. So, that that the hinge region helps. So, if uh, antibody is here so and antibody has antibody has two binding site one here another here. So, one antibody one antibody if this is the antibody can bind two antigen at a time, but T cell receptor can bind only one antigen at a time. How this antigen binds? Say so, here. So, this part is antigen the EOLO this is a protein part. So, this is the antigen. So, antibody molecule the same antibody molecule slightly simpler way it is drawn. So, this is the antigen binding site if you see it interacting with the antigen a small part of the antigen not it is like if this is the antigen if some if this pen is the antigen it is not hold the whole pen like that it is holding a small part of it. Okay. So, this small part of it this antigen molecules if you see here this is only this blue part of this antigen this whole molecule is the antigen or the protein a small part the blue part is interacting with the antibody. Same way here this red part is interacting with the uh, another antibody. Okay. These two are completely different. So, two antibody recognizing two different part. So, if whole molecule is antigen the part of antigen which is recognized by this antibody molecule is known as epitope. Okay. It is known as this blue or the red part. So, the segment of antigen which is recognized by the antibody antigen binding site is known as epitope. Okay. So, this is known as epitope. So, the part of antigen which is recognized by the antibody is known as epitope, but the part of antibody which is recognizing the epitope is known as paratope. So, the antigen binding site of antibody is paratope and the antigen part which is recognized by 
antigen or recognized by antibody is epitope. Okay. So, you can understand from this figure like whole protein is not interacting with the antibody, the small segments are interacting, but in case of T cell what is happening? In case of T cell it is slightly different and, and importantly different which we will see which we will see later, but in case of B cell receptor what we see mostly the outer part of the outer part of the protein outer part of the protein is interacting with the antibody. In case of T cell it may happen that the epitope part this again it is also epitope the epitope part which is recognized by T cell receptor may be buried or inside the protein molecule which is not see in the three dimensional structure of the protein. Okay. Because T cell epitope or T cell will not recognize the whole antigen it need to be processed T cell cannot recognize the antigen as a whole. Okay. So, if this is the antigen suppose my hand is the antigen. So, antibody can interact here okay. only this part antibody can interact, but T cell cannot interact like that. So, for T cell what we need for T cell we need that antigen should be processed that means, first if this is the antigen the linear one it should be chopped in pieces. So, it will be chopped in pieces you can see it is different fragments and these fragments should fit there is another component another terminology we have to remember now onwards is known as M H C. M H C is major histocompatibility complex major histocompatibility complex which we will discuss again in later what it is what it what this M H C M H C is a protein MAC is a protein, MAC is a protein that is just like a receptor molecule. Okay. This MAC present there are two type of MAC we will discuss later, but for the timing the MAC is a protein which present as a receptor mostly in the antigen presenting cells in this case. So, this MAC we have a space okay. this also has a cleft that cleft will be occupied by this epitope. So, what is antigen will be processed into pieces one of this piece will go and bind to this epitope this is going to bind this peptide binding cleft of this MHC molecule and T cell receptor T cell receptor can recognize this antigen the red part is now antigen. Okay, just the perspective is different. So, the red part is antigen and yellow part is MAC molecule. So, T cell receptor can recognize the antigen only when it is presented by MHC molecules. So, the T cell receptor binds to a complex of MHC molecules and epitope of an antigen. Okay. So, the, here is the difference B cell receptor can bind antigen unchanged or as a whole. I mean whole antigen you need not to it need not to be processed, but in case of T cell receptor antigen should be processed into different pieces or fragmented one of the fragment will fit into the uh, fit into the cleft of the anti uh, MHC and the whole complex of MHC and antigen will be recognized by T cell receptor. So, here is the difference and after this interaction happen this signal will go inside this signal will go inside the T cell and that then T cell will multiply proliferate and do its function or the effector function what it is supposed to do. I already told this antigen receptor genes are assembled by somatic rearrangement of in complete receptor gene segment which is little complicated for this timing and we will discuss in much more detail later how this receptor how this variety of receptor which can recognize variety of antigen or epitopes we will discuss later. Okay. So, lymphocytes activated by antigen give rise to clones of antigen specific effector cells that mediate adaptive immunity. Okay. So, this activated antigen gives us the clone which is 
may detect adaptive immunity, but we already discussed these B cell or T cell do not develop any adaptive immunity against our own cells. So, how this thing happened? This thing happened actually that a single progenitor cells, the hematopoietic stem cells, can produce multiple cells. These these cells can produce multiple cells. So, this multiple cell will have variety of receptor. This variety of receptor, this uh, is what? Receptor is means if the antigen is look like a triangle, the receptor will be like this. If the antigen looks like a sphere or circle, the receptor will be like this. If it is a square or rectangle, the receptor will be like this. So, that is how the receptors are and this is cartoon for different only 7s are given here because we just to make you understand. So, what is happening all these 7 receptors all these 7 receptors are containing cells undergo development or the training period what I personally prefer that you have they have they need to be trained that what to do or what not to do future. So, what will happen during this developmental stage if they interact with our own protein. So, all these rates are different self antigen. So, if they interact if the receptor of B cells or T cells interact with our own protein they will get a signal that to die. Okay. So, they will these four will die listen carefully any B cell or T cell interacting with our own protein or self antigen during the developmental stage they will get the signal to die. So, in this case four different lymphocytes interacting with self antigen they are going to get the signals to die. So, only three will survive. So, these three mature lymphocytes which does not interact yet with any antigen will come to the peripheral blood. Here in this stage any of these three if any one of them interact with foreign antigen this one will multiply. Okay. So, this one will multiply and do the adaptive immune response or do the job to perform the adaptive immune response. All this phenomena is clonal deletion or clonal selection hypothesis. Okay. This is very important this is the key principle of saving our self cells or self antigen not to do any harm of self, but do harm to the foreign or pathogens or the microbes. What are the, the postulates of this clonal selection hypothesis? It is each lymphocyte bears a single type of receptor with unique specificity that is very important. That means, one lymphocyte whether it is a B or T it will produce only one kind of receptor. If it interacts with a triangular antigen, it will always interact with a triangular antigen and all the receptor will interact with the triangular antigen. So, one B or T cells will produce a single type of or unique receptor with unique specificity. That means, their antigen specificity is unique, they will not cross react with others. Interaction between a foreign molecules and a lymphocyte receptors capable of binding that molecule with high affinity leads to lymphocyte activation that is the last stage. What is this? This if it interacts with foreign antigen strongly it will give the signal to multiply and proliferate. The differentiated effector cells derived from activated lymphocytes will bear receptors of the identical type or identical to the parental cells which lymphocyte was derived coming back. So, this one the yellow one is interact with the antigen and it is proliferating you see all. So, from 1 now it is 5, but all looks identical. So, they will not change the receptor specificity. So, one receptor interact with antigen that particular B cell or T cell multiply into many cells, but the receptor molecules will be same. So, it will interact with the same antigen in future. And the last one is the first part of this previous picture the lymphocytes bearing the receptor specific for ubiquitous self molecules are deleted and at an early stage of lymphoid development. So, they are absent from the repertoire of mature lymphocytes. 
So, now I am giving a, a small home task just to understand. Normally, we say library, cDNA library, genomic library in case of genes, right. Here, we are saying repertoire. What is the difference between library and repertoire? We will find in net or dictionary anywhere, you just see what is what is the library and why it is repertoire. It is a similar kind of library, but we do not say it library. Okay. So, this this is that means, if you interact with the self deletion, I mean if you interact with the self molecules, that particular stage will be, uh, cell will be deleted in the early stage of cell development that is this part. Okay. So, all this event are together we call clonal selection hypothesis that is very important or a basic principle of adaptive immunity. Lymphocytes with cell receptors are normally eliminated during that we already discussed just or it is functionally inactivated. Even if it is not deleted you say that okay, they will get a signal for death they will die they may not be death just in case if they do not get the signal, but they will be functionally inactivated. Okay. We call it energic, so we will discuss later they will not do any further activity in future. So, their other machinery will be blocked and after this what will happen. So, what what we discussed? We discussed cell developed in bone marrow, they then get, they get trained. So, all the cells are developed in bone marrow. So, this is shown bone marrow, this is only the femur but not necessary bone marrow is present only in femur, bone marrow is present all the bones. Okay. This is just for the cartoon. So, bone marrow it will produce then B cell will develop or get the training here or matured here and T cell will develop in the thymus which is the yellow this is the yellow thing the thymus which is located behind the heart. So, T cell will migrate from bone marrow to thymus they will develop there or mature there. After maturation of B cell and T cell, what I said they will migrate to the secondary lymphoid organ like lymph nodes all the blue small dots are the lymph nodes which is present all over the body. Okay. So, they will go and another thing is the spleen. The spleen is another secondary lymphoid organ and there are some uh, mucus associated lymphoid organ also we will see. So, they distributed. So, it is kind of see it is a defense system. So, defense system cannot or the members of the defense machinery cannot sit in one place right. If like in a local police station what we see is there is a main police station to maintain the law and order main police station and there are lots of local thanas in different places right. So, different places lot of local thanas. So, what happened main police station is here they are controlling everything or they are getting the information, but local thanas are taking care of their small area of their capacity. Here lymph nodes are this kind of local thana okay. or a, a good number of police personnel like B cell and T cells are sitting there. If there is any person doing any crime what will happen? There are certain person in police department they catch and bring it to the nearest thana or the police station right. Here also that lymph nodes are the local police station and macrophage dendritic cells they are covering or scanning the whole body. If there is any infection they bringing them or catch them and bring them bring them to the local police station like the lymph node. And lymph node is taking care that okay, check them because at the initial part if the innate immunity already can handle this at the tissue level it is fine, but some of the information of that particular pathogen or the pathogen as a whole they will bring it to the nearest lymph node. So, 
the immune system will take I mean take the initiative for the adaptive immunity. If it is already managed by innate immunity, there will not much response of adaptive immunity, but if it cross the innate immunity, then adaptive immunity will make a specific target based weapon like antibody or T cell definitely will help to make the antibody and that antibody will go and manage the infection. Okay. So, it these limb nodes are all over the body and it will take care of the future I mean infection states what it is doing. What is happening? So, you see immature dendritic cell resides in the peripheral tissue. So, in skin or some other peripheral tissue immature dendritic cells are lying in between there. So, if there is any cut or anything happen any infection happen here dendritic cells are there they can do the macro pinocytosis and they will form a macro pinosome where they will capture this bacteria or other pathogen whatever it is there. So, from there they will bring it to the lymph node. Okay. So, this is the lymph node I will come what is the lymph node maybe today or maybe in the next class. So, in this lymph node this dendritic cells they will present the antigen listen carefully in the lymph node they will present the antigen to the B cell and T cell. Okay. So, because infection happen in tissue somewhere else. So, the dendritic cell take that candidate or the pathogen bring it to the nearest lymph node and that, that lymph node which is packed with B lymphocyte and T lymphocytes. So, they will so see this is the culprit do whatever you want to do or you can do this kind of presentation. So, what will happen this dendritic cells here what I am talking like the uh, kind of uh, conversation between two humans in two cells they do not talk like that I am sure you know they talk between I mean any kind of interaction or signaling or cross talks between cells are happening between protein and protein. So, one protein is in the surface of the dendritic cells that is why we call it antigen presenting cells. So, they present the antigen on their surface which T cell can see. So, what is going to happen there are a lot of T cells here. So, some T cells can see if specific T cell binds here they remain attached and they replicate you see from 1 to 2 to 2 to 4 they are increasing and these T cell activated T cell will ultimately do the job. Okay. Dendritic cells actually the uh, middle man between innate immunity and adaptive immunity because in innate immunity what happened neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte, monocyte means in tissue we call it macrophage they are taking care they are eating phagocytosing they can kill it they digest it okay. and they do all the uh, releasing all the cytokines and chemokines which brings more neutrophils and macrophages. So, they are handling this at the site, but dendritic cells they are staying at the site while they are these group of cells are taking care of the infection the dendritic cells bring some of the antigen to lymph node where B cell and T cell see them and do their job. What is doing B cell will be activated produce and oh sorry B cell will be activated produce antibody to tackle and T cell will help B cell in some case in some case it helps that we will see uh, uh, in next class and T cell there is another type I told in the uh, uh, previous lecture the two one is cytotoxic T cell one is helper T cell another is cytotoxic T cell. So, in case of uh, helping like B cell activation helper T cell is coming if the virus infection happen then cytotoxic T cell will be activated because virus infection you cannot kill just the virus because virus grow inside our own cell right. So, I you have to kill the cell to stop their growth. So, cytotoxic T cell recognize which cell is virus infected go identify them and after identification they kill that particular virus infected cell. So, the virus cannot grow much or more to infect neighboring cells or furthermore. So, that is how the virus infected cells NK cell also helping them. So, this way from the 
site of infection where innate immunity playing a major role dendritic cells bringing them to the nearest secondary lymphoid organs mostly lymph node it may be spleen or other uh, cells and make a bridge between innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Normally in the previous slide what I, say, what I said or previously also dendritic cells are efficient in macropinocytosis. Pinocytosis means drinking liquid and phagocytosis means eating the solid material like bacteria or something. Okay. But dendritic cells in tissue are phagocytic. So, they are specialized to display their antigen at the cell surface. Okay. That means, this is also antigen presenting cells. There are three types of antigen presenting cells or three antigen presenting cells are there in the immune system. Dendritic cells, macrophage and B lymphocytes. So, they not only do the job for immune system, do the job this is also a part of immune system not only do their own job like uh, killing them or phagocytosis them they also present the antigen to T cells. So, B cell is doing their own job like production of antibody, but at the same time it is also presenting antigen to T cells to for their recognition. Similarly, dendritic cells doing its job phagocytosis or macropinocytosis macrophages eating the bacteria killing them at the same time they are also presenting. So, these three cells dendritic cells macrophage and B cells are also called antigen presenting cells or professional antigen presenting cells. Okay. So, this is for today's lecture I hope uh, you will remember it and in next lecture we will discuss more on adaptive immune response what is happening how the B cell and T cell helping or how the T helper cells and cytoroxy T cell works. Thank you for today.